Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the meeting of May 11th for the Board of Selectmen. Uh, I would like to start the meeting by rising to the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, I would like to start by saying uh, we won't have Brent in the meeting tonight. He had had a medical procedure done. Everything supposedly went well. And we will miss him tonight, but it's an excused absence, and uh, we wish him well. Get better soon. First item on the agenda is the review of items for consent. Minutes of April 27th, accounts payable manifest for $13,053.62. Payroll manifest of $41,472.55. Timber tax warrant, map 15, lot 2. Administrative abatement, map 2, lot 54. Tax warrant, $8,460,421.50. Due on July 1. Administrative abatement for tax collector timber gravel warrant of April 27th, 2015. And the race for remission road race May 23rd. Does anybody want to remove any of the items for consent? Hearing none. Do I have a motion? I make a motion to accept the consent items as read. I have a motion by Mr. Brunel. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Bork. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? All those abstain? Motion carries 4-0-0. Next is a request for items for other business. Is there any other business? I'd like to uh, review the uh, bills for this week. They're past due and why they were past due. Okay. And anything else? Hearing none, just because we have someone in the public, I will say we don't open public comment until 6.30, just to make sure you know that ahead of time. Thank you. Uh, so we'll go right into the administrator report. Jason, new business. New business. Uh, at a uh, town meeting, we approved uh, the uh, replacement of the uh, forestry truck for fire department. Uh, Chief's been looking into the variety of vehicles since uh, that was passed in March. Uh, we followed at least three viable leads, had at least had one additional truck evaluated. You might have noted an invoice from Fleet Ready a few weeks ago. Um, he, I provided his recommendation. He's looking at a 2004 Ford uh, F550. Um, and he notes uh, that he and um, Firefighter and mechanic Fecto have inspected it. They're both comfortable. The vehicle's in good condition, and given the price, believe it will be a good fit for the intended purpose. Um, they were, were able to negotiate the price to fourteen nine ninety nine. Um, you recall the bet we raised twenty thousand the balances for remaining setup of that vehicle. <coughs> How much remaining setup is there? Just as a question, I mean, they've got to strip the box off, it looks like. Yeah, and move uh, move our gear onto the back of it, and there may be some building because of the size and shape. But, I mean, you know, he knows, you know. Are we doing a painting? Yeah. No. Are we going to uh, recoup any money from that, that box that's coming off there or not? Um, I don't know yet. Um, or we, we may be able to recoup some space, some of the parts of it and just re reconfigure it too. That's one of the other things we had talked about. So I'm not exactly sure what the end result will be. Why, you said the last vehicle they looked at went to Fleet Ready. Is this one going to go to Fleet Ready also? Uh, this one is not going to go to Fleet Ready. Why? Uh, because this one um, came with an inspection, 20 day plates and a 30 day thousand mile warranty. The one, at, the one that we took to Fleet Ready was sitting by the side of the road as is. Okay. Um, you know, so but part of it too was just simply the logistics of 
that one didn't have to go very far to get the fleet ready. Um, th this one, um, this is why mechanic and uh, went up with the chief to go over it because this is, um, I think what this is in Concord, I think. Oops. Oops, sorry. So right now you're estimating the truck value that they'd want to purchase is basically 15,000. Right. The wording of the warrant article stated what? Up to 20. For purchase? Purchase and set up, I think. Let me pull the... Uh, that's what I'm wondering about. I'm expecting it was written with that because we did not yeah. Um, raise and appropriate the sum of twenty thousand dollars for the replacement of the utility vehicle used by the fire department. Do you feel that that covers? The I'm storage? very comfortable. Yeah, because this is replacement of. It doesn't say purchase of a specific vehicle. We're replacing the old vehicle. So and I think we were clear that our intention when we talked about it here was to buy a vehicle and set it up as needed. I just got a quick question. Yep. Skid unit that's on the on the. Utility one now. That's that's going to be mounted to this, correct? That I believe is the is the uh, the plan. Okay. Um, that said, I'm not sure if they if there are issues moving one from the other, they may not be able to do that. Okay. Well, the second question would be: is if they do do that, is the chief looking to add a bed back to the utility? Oh, the one we have now. Uh -huh. Um. Most likely, yeah. Yeah, if we can get some more value out of that with the straight bed on it, so. So do you think that uh, that $5,000 would cover that as well? Um, that I don't know. I mean, again, it's, you know, as much as we can get within that 20000 and get, I mean, our primary purpose was get, get, get an appropriate forestry one kitted out for those needs, and then the dust will settle on the rest where it settles. So, any other questions, Walter? There are none. Moving along, we have with the approval. Don't we? I don't know. We we? It was already. It was already. Well, the warrant approved it, but it's still, it's still discretion of the selectman, I believe. Okay. Yeah, I, it, your your authorization to approve this purchase since it's over twelve thousand would be appreciated per our purchasing policy. Oh. <laughs> Here I was thinking that it was just an automatic go. I thought it was his his deal. <laughs> uh, anybody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve the purchase of <clears throat> the two thousand four two thousand four Ford F two fifty crew cab. As described in the discussion for 14, well, it's going to be, well. How about as not, recommended by the fire chief? As recommended by the fire chief and not to, not to exceed $16,000. I have a motion by Mr. Brunel. Do I have a second? I will second that. <coughs> Any discussion? Hearing none. Oh like to amend the motion mm -hmm. to um, state that um, the amount of purchase plus title fees uh, will not exceed uh, $15,200 uh, and the chief will be able to expend up to $20,000 for retrofit of the vehicle. Does that make sense? Oh, uh, how about for purchase and retrofit because and just make it twenty thousand dollars yeah because you, you know the yeah we're not authorizing a new 20 for retrofit that's all inclusive so yep but the amendment yep i can second the amendment so I'll second it. all right so we have um frank that made an amendment and <coughs> i'm sorry mr byron made the amendment and Mr. Brunel seconded the amendment. 
Any discussion on the amendment? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? All those abstained? Aye. Motion carries 3-0, well, sorry. The amendment carries 301. Now we have the amended main motion. Any further discussion on the amended main motion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? All those abstained? Aye. The amended main motion carries 301. Are we done with the fire truck now? All right. I think so. Okay, Jason, you're on to old business. Uh, old business. Uh, pipeline discussion? I think yep. that's what I have up next. Okay. Um, last meeting, we talked a little bit about the notion of the, uh, the municipal coalition um, looking at sharing uh, legal services. Uh, coalition met with two additional lawyers on the 5th. Um, we're considering what direction we want to take as a group. The main issue seems to be sort of the degree of engagement through the various parts of the process. Um, you know, we have the federal review, we have state review, and we have um, utility commission. Uh, the straw poll of the uh, group there let's show we are pretty roughly split between the two. Um, so we're aiming to meet again next week to hopefully take a more, uh, to go one direction or the other. Uh, one of the things that uh, we all agreed to go back and discuss uh, with our boards um, was a potential cost. You know, at our last meeting, we talked about you know, freeing up a certain amount of money through 2015. Also recognize that this is not any going to be resolved by the end of 2015. So uh, you, know, you may be looking at, uh, you know, we had... Uh, said up to 20 we may be looking at you may be looking at that amount or more next year as well going forward you know until this process kind of peters out whatever format it takes um and um i guess i wanted to sort of throw that out there make sure there wasn't any i mean i when we talked about the tw like a 20 at last meeting, I wanted to make sure that it wasn't sort of the thought that, well, that we, that's what we set aside and that's all we have. We might have, you might have to throw some more in next year. I, I think and is. I, I was going to say, I think the conversation was, I think we all understood that it, that was the starting point. Yep. And it would cost more, but there's a significant outcry from the residents and the community in general that they don't want to see this happen. And until there's a benefit to Litchfield, it makes sense for us to continue. Yep. You know, if I was in their shoes, I'd want my selectmen to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, come come 2016, we have to raise more money. That's the argument, right? The, the residents, the community has asked for it, and yep, they support it. Um, and the and the other question, you know, the, the question is, and this is sort of what's interesting, and as we look at this, is figuring out at what point this project stops making sense. If, if the process goes longer. And I think that's sort of the engagement on all of these different levels. Um, there's actually an interesting issue of municipal owned land in a lot of the towns too, um, where, uh, I mean, you know the drill, you can't give up easements or sell property for certain classes of town property. You have to go to town meeting for that. Mm -hmm. So that um, creates an interesting situation. Um, we have no further information yet about the uh, FERC scoping hearings. Um, I think I had shared a note that had gone out from all four members of our delegation um, asking that any town, they asked FERC to consider that any town that um, asked to host a, a, a scoping hearing, that FERC would schedule one there. Not that we've had any commitment from FERC on that, but you'll recall the letter that you guys sent actually requested a hearing here. So um, I'll know more again. We meet next week. So we also prepped. I think I shared a um, under the information section. I shared the uh, the copy of the uh, letters that we sent out um, that went out with a uh, member signatures. Same letter was signed by the whole group. Went out to all impacted officials. We probably signed nearly 50 letters 
So we'll see where that goes. Any other questions on that? I don't necessarily have a question on that, but I have a recommendation for us moving forward. The um, what's the reserve fund that we put on the ballot, like for the uh, that we bought the. That's the capital. That's a capital. Uh, capital the reserve. Capital yeah, reserve. we should probably make one for the lawyers. But you said the contingency fund would get rid of it. I, I, well, I made the argument last year to bring the contingency <laughs> back, and we were told we didn't need it. But instead, we're going to make all these buckets for all these hypothetical things that can happen. We should probably do one for that. Just because one time only and keep well, because right now we're being stuck. We're 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 going to have to come up with the money. We're going to have to find where it is. Mm -hmm. But if you had a fund for it, right? yeah, it doesn't even have to be that much money. It's just something because something would help this case now. Right. Yeah, if we had ten. It be <coughs> just something to put in the back of our minds for later on. It is it, it, one of the ways to think about this, though, is that uh, figuring out what happens when you don't spend all of the money there um, and think about how you want to because you know a capital reserve fund you're re restricted to whatever purpose you create it with um, if you discontinue the capital reserve fund you actually have to go back to town meaning you discontinue the capital reserve fund can you write in a way that it expires and it goes back to the fund balance um, yeah well there the wouldn't be a capital reserve but sure you could probably you could write it as a non-lapsing appropriation so you could you could raise and appropriate a certain sum of money and make it available for whatever stated period. I don't think you can take a non-lapsing beyond three years, but you, which would be more than sufficient. That so same concept, just you know that may be the way to do it, and then it just goes away. Well, I mean, we have it for the winter maintenance. Well, the winter maintenance, the <laughs> right the highway department, however you want to call that. Right. Why couldn't you just make one for? Well, it, it also, okay, it, to, to, to two thoughts. I mean, if you make it for unanticipated legal type things and, and you write it that way so it could be for this pipeline thing, it could be for the next thing that comes down the road, then your capital reserve makes sense. If you're talking about just for pipeline related issues, then a lapsing appropriation makes sense. No, I would do it for in general so that when the next item comes up, I mean, it, it could be a hydrant issue or something. You, you never know what could happen, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It could be, I don't know, they want to run a three-foot main down 3A. I mean, you never know what could it be. Right. Just thinking. Okay. No, it makes sense. I mean, I think, you know, um, you know, we can talk about what purpose, but, I mean, I, you know, I would love to be able to have that kind of resource because it's kind of, in some way, kind of scary sitting here saying, hey, we want to do something. And you know you can only find so much money. But we're going back to having a contingency. That's really what it's going to be. Well, it's not going to raise it every year. We're going to raise it once, leave it in the bank for three years, and then it expires. We go that route. I don't know. I can see. I can see. You know, our legal fees being cut in half in the budget, and say, well, if you need more, you go over here. You know instead of what the real intent for what our real intent was is 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 the non-routine right so it's what the I mean, it's what i always thought the the contingency plan was the contingency fund was for it was always talking about i always remember being used for legal but there was other you probably hygiene goes bad road we had the extra cash to deal with the problem mm -hmm. but we have those other funds now that takes care of most of the other identifiable things well i also thought contingency was good for all the committees that have fees built in for the uh, the money built in for training and stuff like that that never happens. Yeah, the only challenge they say. I mean, it might it. only be a couple thousand dollars, but it'd be a couple thousand less dollars that have to be raised to sit in somebody's budget that's going to manage to the bottom line. That's if you do the non elapsing appropriation. Right. right. Yeah. Just an idea. No, oh, Frank, what, what are your thoughts? I mean, I know. Are we discussing the pipeline or are we discussing. Setting up a reserve fund. If you're, if you're discussing setting up a reserve fund, I'll participate. If you're talking about the pipeline, I'm out of it. it was it's a reserve fund. We're talking specifically how to raise the funds to, unfortunately, the topic is the, the pipeline, I think. But. Well, just let me know what the topic is, and I'll the, decide to go from there. The topic was in general for moving on in the future so that 
an issue like the pipeline that has just come up doesn't become a burden on the town to have to I raise personally find think money. that the system we have today is fine I don't think we need a reserve fund for everything that we can imagine under the Sun I think well we're pretty close I think legal fees are a, a separate you know issue that come up very infrequently and I'm not sure that setting up a reserve fund for just legal fees makes makes a lot of sense I also know that if you are um, considering that these monies would be used for paying off any penalties that the town could incur through legal action that also can be done just through the general fund and does not have to be a budgeted item correct hmm. if it's yes well yes but geez uh, the yes or no <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the pain of doing it exceeds the uh, exceeds the uh, ease of doing it that's one of those areas what, what, what there are a few areas where you can actually over overspend your appropriation with limited permission from DRA and legal expenses is one of them correct but you need that's to petition the commissioner and all of this other silliness to so, do it so if you get yourself into a gym and you're gonna spend a hundred thousand dollars in legal fees which we ought to examine whether that makes the right sense or not, or spend over twenty-five grand, or whatever the case may be. It may be better just going through the over over expense route. It would give our town administrator something to do in his spare time. He always needs things to fill in his time, right? It will turn your town administrator's gray hair white, but. All right, too late. <laughs> too late. That's, my, that's my opinion mm -hmm. on the legal fee issue. All right, so we beat that one down pretty good. <laughs> so let's move on to the ever so enlightening policy review. All right. Um, most of these, I think, are going to be fairly straightforward. So I have questions. All right. On the uh, fraud policy. Mm-hmm. In the fraud policy, it requires that a manager or supervisor make sure that an individual is familiar with the policy and requires a form be signed off. Mm -hmm. um, besides the fact that I won't ask the question, do we have forms for everybody in town? My question really is, does this infer that if you sign off the policy last year as a new employee that you understand it? that because we revamped this policy that it's a new version therefore you have to sign it off again no yep. hold on no well, hold on hold on that's why we specifically have here if you look at the very last paragraph it'll be reviewed annually by the selectmen um, and they'll review and then employees will review and accept this policy upon appointment revisions to the policy by the board of selectmen or at least every three years if no other events cause policy reissue you approve this policy in 12 we distribute it out all across everybody and boy yeah, that's a fun exercise to get it out and track it um thankfully the last two years you reviewed it and ratified it but did not make any changes that didn't require the wholesale distribution so if you when you do it this year, guess what? We're at three years. So the expectation is this has to go out to everybody again. So I guess that's your answer, Frank. If you if you don't change it, it only goes out every three years or in the in intervening period when you get hired. So if I hire you last week, you're going to get it again if you was approve it tonight just because it's easier for us to track. I'm not going to go back and say, oh, this person was hired last year. They're clear for another year. So... So because we put a new, new uh, established date on it, you're not considering this as a revised policy? No, unless you change the substance, okay. I don't consider it a change. Any other questions, Frank? Not on this policy. Okay. Anybody else have questions on the fraud policy? Do I have a motion? Make a motion we approve the fraud policy as presented by the town administrator. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Brunel, seconded by Mr. Bork. Any discussion? 
<coughs> Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? All those abstain? Motion carries 400 on the fraud policy. Next is the fund balance policy. Jason? Yep. Uh, no changes recommended here. This is one we put in place a couple of years ago. It, um, mainly the way that the fund, fund balances are defined and um, put into their own little boxes. That was a requirement of a, uh, a GASB uh, 54. Has GASB 54 changed since 2011? Um, as far as I know, no, it hasn't. Usually those GASB things are issued and then they stay until they're superseded by something completely different. So, Anything? Anything? Any questions? Do I have a motion? I make a motion we approve the, town, the town's uh, fund, pol fund balance policy as reviewed by the town administrator and discussed. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Motion by Mr. Brunel, second by Mr. Bork. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, all those abstain. Motion carries four zero zero. Next, investment policy. Jason, investment policy. Um, I, th I think this one, having reviewed it with the treasurer as well, that we have no uh, no changes here. Um, Any questions? Do Actually, this doesn't cover the uh, trustees of trust funds. Nope, they said they make their own. That's, yeah. Any other questions? Come motion. <clears throat> I make a motion we, pat, we approve the investment policy as discussed and reviewed by the town administrator today. I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. Motion by Mr. Brunel, seconded by Mr. Bork. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, all those abstain. Motion carries, 400. Purchasing policy. Hold on, hold on. Before we do that, I just wanted to draw your attention to, I do have a note on uh, page four here that uh, one of the things that we said is the policy of the board to diversify its investment portfolio. Um, and just an observation that right now the best return we have is a standard bank account offering. We had it had been we had been in a CD as market it, and rates change. This may be viable in the future. I mean, we meet with the bank each year to see what the best approach is given uh, what they have to offer and what. What, you know, the other thing we do is to figure out what average balances we need to offset our fees. So that's where we are at the moment. Um, as the market changes, maybe something else will change. Purchasing policy. This one's going to be short and sweet. It's not ready. Um, and the re, and, and part of it, and just, just so you know, the, the thing that I'm, have not had a brilliant insight on yet is I'm trying to work through some recommended changes for exceptions and unusual purchases. You know, largely around the issues of sole source and areas where sealed bids are not necessarily feasible. Um, and looking at things where we have, you know, one company that bids on patch paving. Um, you know, we've had one company kind of regularly setting up our cruisers. Now, how we want to handle all of that um, ver against the language we have in the policy. So th those are the questions that I'm trying to find a good way to do without making a mockery of the policy or sort of having all these standards and then being waiving them all. So 
Um, that's the, I just that's the challenge I'm working with. You know, in the past we had done sort of a vendor exclusion list, uh, and we decided to not do that last year. And so there may be a reason to bring part of that back again, just to have the protection of the policy and you know it, fresh in my mind because we've had business as usual type things that we've done that if I read the policy letter by letter we're not following but we're complying with the spirit of the policy that's what I want to figure out last year when we got rid of the list weren't we getting rid of the list because of the fact that we reworded the policy to allow for sole source vending in certain areas, but not not those those that limited set of and and it may well be that the, that we just discuss the limited set of things and they are what they are and I don't even write it into the policy and it sort of sits back and it is the board's discretion it is the board's policy. Well, I was just going to say, how about anything that doesn't meet the policy has to be approved by the board? End of story. Because most of the time it's going to be a large purchase purchase anyway. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, th th those are the things. I mean, I I think of you know I think of the couple that we have. Th again, we're not talking many. We're talking about the half a dozen instances over the course of the year. So. What's everybody think? Bueller. Bueller. <laughs> Frank. Don't know. Want to think about it? Yep. Okay. It's not ready for renewal anyway. Yeah. yeah. How's that? That's fine. Well, I mean, I, you know kind of what's on my mind. If anybody right. has any other great ideas, uh, please let me know because. Well, when we talked about it the other day, that was pretty much what I thought was if we're having that hot of a time, maybe we just right away out. Yeah. Put it, put it yeah. back over here because, again, how often does this happen? Yeah, and it, it just to, to be able to demonstrate, hey, we've paid attention to it. So we were not just willy-nilly going and doing it, but fig and that's, I think, that's the dilemma I have, is how do we want to verify that this is not irrational that we're doing it? You know, like, I think the conversation we had tonight on fire truck, you know, not incredibly in-depth, but, you know, we've been out, we've looked. Now, it doesn't make sense to do sealed bids on buying a used fire truck. Right. <laughs> so, those are, that's what I'm wrestling with. Um, all right. Okay, so then we will move on to the records retention policy. Records retention. Um, this one um, have made... Uh, several uh, minor changes here. Um, we've, we've re I reviewed it with our group that under state law constitutes the records retention committee, which I think is my, the, the, uh, the uh, a, a, your designee, that's me, uh, the town clerk, tax collector, and the town treasurer. Um, some of the, th mainly what we're doing is um, what we're recommending is dropping a few items where our retention time exceeded the state requirement. Those were mainly in the areas when we first set this up, in areas of financial records. Uh, we were still trying to resolve mysteries from the pre-2010 period. Um, those seem to be behind us now. We've now gone two years without of audits without having to resurrect unsolved mysteries. So um, I think it's reasonable to follow state law. Obviously, we can't have less than state law, so. Um. What at Litchfield, New Hampshire? <laughs> <laughs> so um, the notes I have basically are removing a lot of the uh, local, um, the the local numbers um, where we exceeded. A couple places we are still exceeding state law. Silly thing like payroll, we're keeping payroll. Um, state law is until audited plus one year. We're keeping it four years the, for the stupid reason that time cards under state law are required to be kept for four years. And the way we sort of file and keep our paper records, those are commingled. So, 
if we're keeping time cards for four years, we'll keep payroll for four years. So that was one of the few places I didn't roll back. Other than that, this will give us some more space back in our records areas. Any questions? Here are none. Do we have a motion? Make a motion to approve the records retention policy as written. Second. Motion made by Mr. Byron, seconded by Mr. Brunel. Um, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, calls to a vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, all those abstained. Motion carries 4-0-0. So, we've now finished our policy review, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll move on, move back on the agenda. We'll go to public input at 6.30, call it 8. Any mom and members of the public that would like to speak, please come forward, state your name for the record. Good evening, Tyler Matthews, 38 Page Road. Um, I see when no one's around, you get the public input, 625, so I appreciate it, thank you. Um, I came for one primary reason, but I had a couple others that I guess I'd bring up. Um, and first, speaking of the pipeline and this legal fee potential, I guess what I'd be interested in understanding is, is this lawyer going to be proactive or reactive? Meaning, are they going to react to whatever FERC's decision is? Because if they're going to react to FERC's decision, what's their track record for winning cases against the federal government? Because it sounds an awful lot like a lawyer's just looking to get a two-year payday uh, out of 10 communities. Um, you know, Let's hope we get more than that. <laughs> Well, that's what I heard on the last meeting, right? There's 10 to 12 or 14 mm -hmm. communities, and, and right now there might be 10. But it just doesn't, if they're going to be proactive, what are they doing that we haven't done or can't do? Would be, I guess, questions that, that I'd be interested in hearing. Uh, because it just sounds like, you know, it's a lawyer being a lawyer and, you know, seeing a, a car payment for two years. Or more, I guess, with 10 communities. So. Um, I don't know if any of that's been, you know, heard from from the other communities at this point or not. But I guess that's just that that's my pessimist nature, I guess. Um, another item that uh, I was interested in um, was, uh, I guess, three or four meetings ago. It was the town meeting here where the public came in about the pipeline, another pipeline one. Sorry, Mr. Byron. Um, and I was looking to find, because uh, I couldn't show up, I wanted to listen to the recording. Um, it w I heard from the um, uh, uh, cable committee um, chairman that it was posted on Peg Central, I believe. Uh, but I've watched a lot of them on a YouTube channel. Uh, so it seems like there's two different uploads, and I'm guessing you might upload to the YouTube one. And the web page is. You know, it links to the YouTube, but not the Peg Central. It was kind of confusing a little. It does. It does link to YouTube because it's a, it's a better experience usually. I don't disagree. So it, it just it wasn't up to date there. As well, it should be there because it was posted right after the meeting. Hmm, it so wasn't. Think, yeah. So oh, that's what I, I thought. I just wanted to get yeah, yeah. my own understanding. That's what I imagined. So, thank you. Uh, the primary reason I'm here. Um, Mr. Perry, you were involved in this probably seven years ago on the planning board. Mm -hmm. um, and um, there's still been communication back and forth. Mr. Byron's been very helpful over the last couple of years. Um, there's land, uh, I live again on Page Road, and there was land that was to be developed um, in conjunction with when my house was built. And I happen to you know, share what amounts to be someday supposed to be Weatherstone Road. Okay, at least that's what it was tagged to be seven, eight, nine years ago. Um, and it's just a dirt path leading to my driveway. I know from the planning board perspective that's considered my driveway. I'm adamant that it's not, but that's not why I'm here. Um, the uh, Mr. Charbonneau, I guess, from um, 
continental paving. Um, at least took the lots over back there um, because they were supposed to be single family dwellings, seven or eight of them or so. And I guess what I'm interested in understanding is where that project, whether it be that project or something new, what are we looking at now um, in, in terms of you know, potential for something to get paved there? Um, so that's primarily why I'm here. So you can't, you can't get away from it even though you thought you were. Well, <laughs> it's not getting away from it. Um, do you want to answer? Yeah, we, I mean, we might as well jump ahead. I have this. I have this noted on here. I was going to say. I mean, I, I got bits and pieces. Frank can probably answer it. But you, sure. Um, we we had a uh, conversation with Mr. Charbonneau earlier this year about um, an approach to that full parcel behind you um, that would involve um, you know him using that parcel. Uh, for uh, extracting of sand and gravel and then ultimately a redevelopment of that parcel into uh, recreation and various amenities for the town. I mean, it's a big chunk back there. Right. Um, at this point, the conversation was not about bringing back that approved housing subdivision with the road that you had referenced there. Um, so, uh, the, the request to, for us was to gather some of the key parties from Conservation Rec, Board of Selectmen, to sit together and start looking at what an appropriate use for that site might be. Mm -hmm. um, that said, whatever that is, um, you know, there's, um, it, this also does not preclude going through the normal process of depending on what his initial use is. There are, you know, planning potentially ZBA requirements to go through. And so this doesn't supersede any of that. Mm -hmm. This is just sort of coming up with that longer run plan. Um, you know, unfortunately, but you know, both with, you know, Steve and I, we, we got behind on our plan on that. So on getting that, convening that committee and getting started. That's what we know on that piece of it. So we want to, we need to rev that up uh, faster. Um, that said, what that means specifically for your property access. <laughs> um, I'm very carefully not calling it a driveway or a road, um, lest, uh, but um, I'm not exactly sure where that stands. Uh, but obviously with your concern in mind, we'll take a closer look at what, what that is. I mean, especially with the thought of there may not be a road behind it. Uh, anymore so what what makes the most sense there other than it may be that stub of a road or that road such as it is might be an entrance to whatever facility is built back there for town use and do we have any idea on timelines 10 plus years <laughs> but yeah no well for full build out yes <laughs> For full build out, honestly, that's that's not a joke. Um, the que but well, it's been ten plus years, right? So well, so, so it might, might yeah. be another ten plus. But you know how it works through the process, yeah. and you know what what where we end up. You know, you'll do it. There'll be a part that serves his business need, and then a part that will be transferred over on the town end. Um, obviously, you know, you've been waiting a little while, so that. Hope will be part of, I think, you know, it's reasonable for us to include that in our conversation as we look at timing and phasing to not have that piece be the year 10 part of the site, if at all possible. So, so my understanding through speaking to Mr. Charbonneau was that he submitted plans to the town, informal set of plans, but he submitted some type of a plan to the town in order as to what he was going to do to develop that. That parcel is that correct or incorrect? Uh, no, he he pro he prov uh, he provided to us uh, basically a plan that was a uh, design assistance plan. It shows the parcel and it shows a variety of footprints of recreational uses that you can basically use like as cookie cutters to 
move around on the site to plan, hey, if you want to do five little league fields, these, these are the footprints if you want to do two soccer fields. So uh, he, he, gave, he gave us some tools that we can start getting the committee moving with. It's not a, at all a final design. Okay, because he told me directly that he's looking for feedback from the town. Mm -hmm. So if he's looking for feedback from the town, I'm assuming that the town must be coming up with some type of criteria that it's going to use in order to put this together. It would seem that's where getting this first group together and figuring out where what the needs so are. Is there anything based upon that that, that uh, this gentleman can look at? No. I mean, I'm happy to show you the sketch, but it's really not going to answer any of your questions. You can see what one of every type of recreation field dropped onto that parcel looks like. Sure. Um, I'm happy to show it to you, no, but no, it's I not going to put your mind too much at ease because that's not what we're doing. It's kind of a basic planning tool at this point. Sure. Um, so is, is Mr. Charbonneau then waiting on this committee to come back with, here's what we want to use that land for? I think that's probably fair. I mean, I think that's that's step one, and then there's also, let's not forget, there's also step two of there's got to be and whatever his initial plan is has to get through planning board, ZBA, all of those initial steps too, mm -hmm. um, which is its own process. If this can be answered, I, I know he was out back there because there were, um, again, lots that were went under from the, the prior owner. Uh, and so he um, went to an auction and, and got those specific parcels. But my understanding is those were acre parcels. There's hundred plus acres back there. So did he already have that? He, he already owned it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He owns the complete parcel now. That would include gotcha. the, that would include the road, Weatherstone in your case going in. Yep. As well as the whole back area there. And um, my understanding is his intention to, um, as Jason said, to take some gravel out of there that will pay pretty much for what he's invested in the parcel mm -hmm. and then to turn this over to the town for use of some type of recreational activity. Now, okay. where it stands right now, he told me directly that he's waiting on the town. Yeah. Well, if you need volunteers, then let's get it rolling. I'll be happy to help. Okay, it's good to know. I appreciate it. We will. So, other than that, I guess that's it. You know, I'd I'd love to invite him along to be the volunteer, but being in a butter, does that create an issue? Um, yes and no. Um, you know, whatever is built is going to be in his backyard. So, you know, um, wouldn't it be helpful to have somebody at the table at the front end rather than the back end we of the process? At, uh, Sawmill. We had yeah. The neighborhood was involved in the planning. Yeah, I, I don't see any concerns to affect that, that field. So, I don't think it's a yeah, I you know I, I think it's I, I think it's more constructive if we decide the community oh. needs a Ferris wheel and we put it in you know three feet from his backyard. I would rather hear from him earlier rather than later saying I don't think that's the best use. I don't have any issue with it. I'm the selectman <laughs> designee, I guess we'll call it, to this committee. And my plan was we're going to talk about it tonight, and well, I guess we kind of just did. Yep. And we're going to try to drum up a meeting for next week. Okay. Um, I'm sure Jason's got your contact, right? I'm, I may even still have it. I can get, I can get contacts if, if need be, but yes. Um, or give it. It's not a problem. So... Um, We'll let you know. I yeah. mean, yeah, okay. I don't have any problem with you being there. I think it'd be good. As long as it's not recorded. Just <laughs> Everything's recorded. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. just a little tiny TV. Um, I know. <laughs> That's all it is. Right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, by the way, for coming in. You guys look lonely. It's nice to it's nice to have some public input every once in a while. Very well. Very <laughs> disappointed not one of you used the opportunity to say fraud when you were talking fraud. Fraud, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> fraud detection? Uh, not so, once, so next week there's gonna be a meeting on this? 
That's my hope. Yeah, that's what we've, we're aiming for, hopefully. Do we have um, representation from all of the player committees in this? Yes. Do you have the list of everybody? Yeah, I do. I okay. do. I do. That everybody, every committee's filled the, the spot, right? right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that we now have people in each of those how slots. Many, how many citizens do we have in there? Uh, not well, well one <laughs> because how many well well okay well let, let, let's rephrase that they're all citizens because the, the initial framework we talked about was planning conservation rec selectmen right and then we also discussed that having a few citizens that don't necessarily have to be attached to any of those boards or committees yes could also be welcome to join as well yeah and that we're happy to take take those um, we haven't this is the first sign this is the first sign of interest so I'm always happy to have you know I will tell you in that same vein I've had one person express interest in the um, in agricultural commission so that's one more than you had yes one does not make a commission so oh, I'll give you another name <laughs> okay um, that gives me so anyway that's where we are at this point but the committees we all want the boards and committees we now have somebody that took into march to get everybody through their cycles to get me those people so okay so now, now the trick just is uh, you know do we when are people available but I, I guess i would be of the opinion we don't wait for when they're available you just call a meeting and yep. say this is when the meeting will be well since i'm one of them tyler's going to be one of them <laughs> How's Monday work for you? It's fine. How about next Monday? It's one to seven. What? No. You got to do it. What? No, um, because I want to talk about other other items once oh, yeah. we finish yeah, this. Yeah, 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 that's right. Okay. What is what else is good for you next week? Are you going to talk about your other item now? The other item is another selectman meeting because of the fact that we have. The following month, the, the regularly scheduled meeting would be on Memorial Day. The problem that we have there is that we then move into June. So my recommendation when I was talking to Jason was to do another one next week because it can probably be relatively quick. And then that way, because you had something that needed to be done before June anyway. Oh, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm working on filling that agenda for next week now, though. Um, okay. But it, it, wor it actually works well in our schedule. Um, you know, uh, tax collector and I have talked about we have um, some properties that are nearing deed. Yep. So she wants to do a briefing with you of what those properties are beforehand. Okay. Because then we need to tee up what our process is before the deed date, which is in June. Um, so does Monday work for everybody yeah. next week? So the 18th, yeah. right? Yep. I'm available in the evening. I have a meeting during the day. But I'm fine. Make sure that I'm fine. Okay, so next Monday we'll meet. Mm -hmm. And then that way there, then we have three weeks off, and the right? Meeting, the meeting on the 25th is canceled, right? Well, that's Memorial yeah, that's Day. That would be Memorial Day, so yes. Right. I will not be available in any shape or form for that. So tell me, tell me the 18th, right? The 18th. The 18th. Is that early? It's Memorial Day early this year? It's real early this year, yeah. Do we have any, not, do we have any know what the plans for Memorial Day are? Not yet. Not you never know until the day of. Maybe we'll know next week. So we're going to schedule a meeting for the 18th of May, which is next Monday, and then we will not meet again until the 8th of June. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Everybody in agreement? Perfect. So back to our schedule for next week. I cannot do Tuesday and I cannot do Thursday. So it would have to be Wednesday or Friday. I'm going to call the meeting. Let's call it Wednesday then. Wednesday. Okay. As long as you're okay. Yep, I, you won't have me, but that's. Do we need you? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think you do need me.
You and, you and I will go over the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, I'll, right. I'll run over what I have, and you guys need to figure out. But yes, I don't think you need me at this one. Excellent. What time? Um, what time? On Wednesday, we're going to go with 7 o'clock. Is Mr. Charbonneau invited? Sure. Can be. Or do you want this meeting just to kick around ideas? Um, I think it would probably be better if he's available and wants to come. All the better because, if anything, yeah, he can he can help um, relay what his plans, ideas, thoughts, the whole nine yards to everybody that's going to be there. I don't think that that's a bad thing at all. Okay. So Jason, will you put out the uh, email that will go to everyone? Yep. Asking for their attendance as well as Mr. Shabano. Mm-hmm. For next Wednesday, the twentieth. At 7 p.m. Do you want state DES there or do you want. Uh... No. <laughs> Hold on. No. I want a constructive local meeting. <laughs> I have added my event. If you say it now, it will be on TV. I'm not going to do that. No. <laughs> I'm just I'm making get sure you. Five messages. I'm just making sure you're aware. <laughs> if you walk over and write it down. If you would like to just walk over and write it down for me, I will be more than happy to make sure. Isla, there, there's a, I know a couple that lives. There's another street that parallels yeah. that Weatherstone oh, that's, <laughs> that's further up towards 50. Yes. There was a couple up there I know that was interested in stuff as well. Okay. They kind of dropped out over the, I don't know if you've been in touch with them at all. I really haven't, but I can stop by. They're in the same situation you were. Right. You are. Tyler, I will see you next Wednesday. Perfect. Take it easy. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Okay. Back to our wonderful business over here. So our policy review is done. Oh, we're still on um, public input. Is there any further public input? Hearing and seeing none. I'll close public input at 7 o'clock. And we will now move on with our agenda. Uh, IT services. Uh, there was a uh, discussion I introduced at the last meeting about um, <clears throat> formalizing our, our agreement with um, John as a the provider of IT services. Um, what I've cobbled together here is a... Uh, contract um, an agreement for services um, that uh, outlines um, the type of work that needs to be done and um, the honorarium that we will pay for this um, and the requirements on the provider for meeting um, various record checks for access to departmental data. Um, John has reviewed this and uh, Laura has reviewed this and are both they're both comfortable with the contents of this. So I think I'm just going to step off the table for a bit. <laughs> I stayed uh, in I, place while the pipeline is discussed. You can sit there. Yeah. I'll follow your lead from last time. Okay. Has everybody had a chance to review this? Yeah. Frank? Yep. Uh, are there any questions? My only qu question that are, I guess I, like, this should probably be directed to John, right? Who, 
would we still be uh, using the the people that currently back you if something's yeah. happen? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep, that's a separate line on the budget. Okay. I mean, actually, I just came back from vacation. They covered me for ten days when I've been out of the country. Yeah. Uh, maybe she's just like me back, but that's a long story from all day. That's fine. I was waiting for you. It probably was. <laughs> well, that's the only question. You, you're comfortable with the contract, John, and you don't feel that there's any conflict that you have um, with your work? Uh. No, I do not. Um, and then obviously, the news and services now since 2007. No, but in this case, it now becomes an official contract between yeah. you as a vendor and and um, the town. That's why I was wanting well, to ask you. Well, actually, the way I understand it is that I'm not really a vendor. I'm, I'm identified as a town employee, or at least something like that. Right. Yeah, yeah, you're identified as a town official. Right. So it's the same, in my mind, it's equal to the same thing as a select member. Or I don't want to give you So I don't believe there's any conflict there. Well, the only reason I'm saying that is because it identifies you here as a provider. Yeah. Mm hmm. So how does this, how does a provider distinguish? or equivalent to a town official? Um, because under the honorarium section, it says the provider will be considered a town official for the purposes of employment classification. Uh, because it couldn't make it an on-call. It's not a regular part-time. We, were, we, were we weren't creating a position per se. Uh, but we also weren't doing entirely third-party contract because John is covered as an official under our property liability insurance as opposed to having him stand as a full separate business. We've never had that arrangement with John as a full separate business. So it's basically just calling what it is. Well, if it wasn't deemed as that, we wouldn't be able to have this discussion well, with a contract right well, now my question is you're creating a, uh, by this you're creating a town official without approval of the legislative body mm -hmm. so how are you doing that by um, the selectmen are allowed to cre create town officials there's no there is, RSA is that, Jason? Um, what, what RSA leaves that to the legislative body none then you can't do it. Unless it's specified in law, you can't do it. New Hampshire state laws are different than other state laws. All right. Um, in New Hampshire state law, you have to be granted authority to do whatever you're doing. Has this been, has council looked at this? Council has looked at this, but um, I'll, let me go back through my note right now and see. individuals who are elect, elected into office through town elections or appointed as officers of the town by the Board of Selectmen. What are you reading now? I'm reading our personnel policy, uh, the definition of town officials. Town officials can be appointed as officers of the town by the Board of Selectmen. Right. For example, Conservation Commission, Planning Board, Recreation Commission, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But all those were allowed to be formed by the legislative body. This is a class of employees. It is another class of, it, we have these all defined under employment classifications. Would you prefer that we call this a temporary employee, an on-call employee? If we call it an employee, we can do it. I agree. That's um, what we're going to be doing, rather than calling it an official. My only hang-up is the official issue. Okay. I mean, official town official is not a is not a term that I'm familiar with being delegated and created in state law. We cre specific positions are created. Right. Town officials is a bucket that we use as an explanation in our personnel policy to do the catch-all of those elected and appointed officials that we have put into some capacity. 
Um, it's the bucket we have where we pay nothing, we pay stipends, we pay honorariums, we pay whatever the bucket is. Right, but all of those positions, as I said a moment ago, are created through the legislative body and not by just solely an act of a selectman. That's my point. Name, we don't, name any official that we have in town that is not um, created by the legislative body. We don't have any. Okay, um, I'm sure. Except unless they're unless they're provided for under state law, for so example, selectmen or what have you. Okay. That's under state law. There isn't any. That, that that's my only point. Just changing the word. It's worth looking into. See if that if it's easier that way. Easier to what? Um, I, 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 I guess, okay, what, what am I replacing it with? Um, if, if we don't accept this premise, then I have no other premise to use, and so I got to throw this whole thing out and start again, which if we need to do that, we, that's what we need to do. Uh, this is the only bucket in our personnel policy that I have. In, in my discussions all throughout this, it was my understanding we talked about contracting to do this. And that didn't involve, in my mind anyways, creation of what you're calling a town official. Okay, well, I mean, we have never had a relationship that is with a third party business for John services. Yeah, we have. Yeah. We absolutely have. Okay, but of in the recent... In fact, what happened is we had that company, John came and wanted to participate in that. Help take that over and get it straight out. But our recent operation has been as a as a town official. John has been working on that as as a town official. That's correct, but that is not part and parcel of his defined duty as a selectman. Right. You're now breaking out his duties on the computer system and calling that a new town official. Mm -hmm. I don't think you have the authority to do that. And I don't think this board has the authority to do it. So to me, that's a question to bring to Laura and, have, and ask her, because she may not have looked at it in that light. And the question I would ask is, why not make it a, uh, if you want to, I don't care if you call it a, well, it should be a part-time employee. Or call it a contractor. I, I don't have a problem with that either. But that's when you run into the issue of the insurance. I, I have, I, I have the, the issue is that I'm trying to ensure that this is covered as a connection of employment with the town rather than as a separate business. Call it a part-time employee. I don't have a problem with that. I, I said that earlier. But I don't think there's anything that allows the town to create, I'll call it an IT official, for lack of a better description. Yeah, we'll, we'll disagree on that. So given that I will not convince you tonight, I will not. I slept at Motel 8 last night, so. I, I, yep. I yep. Um, you can create what you want to create um, in terms of employment. But um, I'll maybe be happy. Then, maybe then I'm misusing the word official. And that's possible. Yeah, I, I think you're putting more putting you're putting more value on the term from sort of a global context. For us, it is a catch all bucket to catch everybody who is not a regular, full time, part time, temporary or on call, which all imply some sort of regular standard employment relationship. See, to me, Anytime I'm using the word official, that means to me somebody who has authority granted under state law, such as a selectman, um, supervisor of the checklists, um, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it. But none of our employees are per se an official. They're a separate category. They're an employee of the town. Okay. And they're not a town official. 
an official to me is somebody who's either elected or appointed by the Board of Selectmen. And to be elected or appointed by the Board of Selectmen, uh, to be elected, it's got to be in state law. To be appointed, it has to be authorized under the state laws. And I think we're overanalyzing it, but if we're meeting next week, I will get the answer from Laura and we'll revisit it next week. Perfect. I have another question. <laughs> <laughs> Only because this is the literal part of me that comes out. The agreement duration, section one. The agreement will automatically renew for three consecutive one year periods unless either party notifies the other in writing of its intent to terminate this agreement at least 30 days prior to expiration of the term. Okay? Go down to the bottom. 4.2. This agreement may be voluntarily terminated within 30 days of written notice upon mutual agreement of the town and the provider. It contradicts section 1. Because this is, this section says that, in, and I don't ever foresee a problem. It's just a, this one says that it has to be mutually agreed upon. But in section mm. one, it says it's automatically renewing unless it's in writing 30 days prior to expiration of term. Two different things. Well, I'm just making sure of that one because is the automatic renewal of the contract. The right. One is the decision I, on either part of the either par, party right. to the, sever the contract. Right. The, section one automatically renews it each yeah. calendar year. So they're broken as separate. Right. This section set, section set. four is you know John comes back and says hey you know um, next you know next May I'm moving to Florida. It's the literal <laughs> part of me that yeah. sits there and says I just read something that said the other. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. That's why I said it was a question. I'm satisfied. You? Yeah. Any other questions, Frank? The only thing I'd add to this, which is if you're going to be discussing this with Laura, would be the funding, if we don't get the funding for it. We're, wasn't there money added to the budget for IT services? There was, and I'm not saying there wasn't, but you go into next year, you got a new budget that you got to deal with. If there's no funding for it, then the town may want to terminate the contract. Now, um, yes, I mean, yeah, and 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 our option with if we have no funding to fund this, then our option will be to find significantly more. But um, I, I I understand what you're saying about you know. You and I have had these discussions, and, and right. Um, so I have a very simple way to fix this. Well, you, the, the reason I'm bringing it up is because in Section 4 it, is it has to be mutually agreed upon by the parties. That's all. So there's no way for either party to terminate the contract mm -hmm. unless it's within that on that three-year period. That's all I'm saying. You don't understand my point. Do you just want me to take out the word mutual to avoid that kind of situation? Does that solve your... Is that, that, could, that could solve the problem, yes. Okay. Do you understand what I'm talking about? I do. Well, the lawyer assumes that what you're putting down is what you want. And they just make sure that it's, it's legal. That's all they're doing. If you're asking for the lawyer to design a contract, that's a separate thing. Seems like a new chicken scratch. Not really. <laughs> okay. All right, tell this guy that next week. If you guys want to go for it, mm -hmm. go for it. No, no, uh, no, no. I'll be glad to abstain. That's no, fine. you bring up good points, and I think that running this by, making sure that we're right. I mean, let's. Oh, I just want to make sure that you and. No, I'm. I'm fine. With you two guys were, so were convincing that you felt that you, this was. No, 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 no. So no, he was trying to, to. He was trying to read my chicken scratch, and he said he didn't know if he'd be able to read that, and I said probably not. That's how I I write in code. I'm sure. <laughs> Okay, Jason, anything else on this? 
No. I presume that we'll be able to clean this up next Monday? Yeah. Perfect. With a big smile. Yeah. All right, John, you're welcome to come back. I will be taking one soon enough. <laughs> so now we are on to other items, correct? Yes. Next meeting, we done. Done. Yep. We already know we're doing it. Yep. FEMA. FEMA. Um, I met with FEMA reps last week regarding our January storm. Um, they had the majority of information needed. I've provided a few updated documents, calculated my eligible direct admin costs. I expect further follow-up electronically from them, so we're in the pipeline. Everything seems to be going the right direction. Um, the application of the state to cover a longer period right now covers 48 hours to that January blizzard. Um, it is um, the state's application uh, to extend that into February has been denied. As of today, it's being appealed. Where that goes, I don't know. Um, there is an added window in there for uh, snow removal from uh, building roofs. They went a longer window on that. So actually, like the, when the FEMA reps were here, their earlier stop was the high school. Um, to meet with SAU uh, because they may have some eligible expenses. Okay. And because we're separate entities, the town and school can't do one app joint application. Didn't we do that before? Yeah. I think, in the past I, I, think, I think in the past, and that was, and I think there was some sort of issue, so that's, I asked early rather than later because my preference would be I do this all the time <laughs> now, and so school could give me their numbers and we could just roll it in. But. Right. They said they needed to be separate. So, okay. anything else on that? On FEMA? Uh, nope. Okay. Uh, the Rec Field Study Committee. We're all set with that. Yep. Dower Water Study. Yep. Um, you may recall a couple months ago I shared some notes. Um, and actually, probably shared again last month. Um, DES has decided that they want to have Penichuk, Litchfield, and Hudson to jointly meet to discuss their regional water supply issues. Um, I got a call, I got an email from DES last week that they want to sit down with um, a couple of us from Litchfield to informally discuss issues and ideas about water issues in the region. They asked if we'd be available the next couple weeks. Interestingly, their two contacts were Frank and I. So, um, you know, one thing is figuring out who do, you, who do you guys want. I don't need to cast a thousands probably at this. You know, the note says a couple of people informal. So um, do you want somebody else from the board there? What's the board think? Anyone? Anyone? Yeah. Originally, I said that there should be a decision on the board who goes to the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, I was involved in the meetings probably in early 2003. 2000. That sound. I think that looks about right. That's like that's that. probably how you ended up back on the list again. So yeah, I'm guessing. I, I think it's the same guy. I, I mm -hmm. don't recollect. But um, somebody else should probably pick this up. Um, I'm not sure what the purpose of the meeting is. To have a discussion, well, okay. When's this meeting? Yeah. Um, not scheduled yet, but you know, the comment was, "Are you available?" You know, this came in, I think, like Friday, and the, the note, "Are you available to meet the next few weeks?" Well, speaking for my own benefit, I won't have time. <laughs> I just I just worked in the uh, the rec fields on the one of two nights I had available next week. I'm, uh, I'm pretty local, so okay. Work wise, so if you need me to come in, I can come. In. Anybody else want to do it? I have an objection, to Kevin, doing it. No objection. <clears throat> you win. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll run something up the flagpole with yeah. I was 
Mr. Husband involved in this? I have no idea. Not at this point, I don't think. He is the catalyst for the reason we're having this meeting. Hmm. He's also a litigant, I believe, hmm. against the state. Yeah, and, and, and this was the state's initial response was, um, I, I think, with Mr. Husband's letter to the governor's office. The governor's office was, I will ask DES to convene a group to study all of this. So this is the outgrowth of that. I can give you some details as well, Kevin, if you need them. OK. OK, anything else? No. Uh, unless anybody has any other questions under any of the other informational items. I guess we can mention that Eversource wants to do their helicopter work, flying the lines. I think they already did. Yeah, I think they did. Did they? Yeah, yeah, yeah they're mm. by my house. Really? Because. They're slated to do it the 15th and 16th. They, they this were, next. They were there oh, well. Last uh, week. <coughs> they, they had an oh. they announced it a couple weeks ago. Oh, wait. Okay. Yeah. Two, two different helicopter things. Okay. What you saw a couple weeks ago <coughs> was their seasonal monitoring of the lines, um, which they do. What, what's coming up later this week is actually construction on that new transmission line that they're building. They actually use helicopter to bring in material yeah. for construction. So it's not aerial survey. It's actual construction. So that's what, you'll, that's what will be happening on the 15th and 16th. So if anybody sees it, nothing funny is going on. Um, anything else from anybody? Hearing none, we'll move to selectman reports. Anybody have anything to report? Uh, <clears throat> Let's see, uh, rec commissioning tomorrow night. I uh, did attend the last one. A lot of discussion around parking problems and certain sign issues. Uh, obviously, irrigation problems now are getting the irrigation system working. And then, um, there was some discussion around loss of fields, around the leagues, around baseball and GMS, and they're trying to work, uh, work the schedule with the existing fields to accommodate those. Like I said, meetings tomorrow night, so I'll catch back up then. I know the sign's been installed down at Sawmill. Okay. The, uh, there was a sign rules, park rules, yeah. stuff like that that was voted on. So the sign has been mounted. It was originally put above the, I don't know what you want to call it, information hut. Yeah. But it has since been moved, so now it's right at the end of the circle. So it's See in it front of the too. field, so when you're walking to the field, you can't miss it. Yeah, I haven't been there since we talked about doing it. So, <clears throat> so I, still, I saw that. The planning board canceled their meeting that was supposed to be for last week um, because there was only like one item to go on there. Their next meeting is next Tuesday. Anybody else? Um, the only other thing I would suggest being mentioned, maybe just as a public service announcement, is the date of the fishing derby for the kids by the con con? I think it uh, that was this past Saturday. Saturday. Was it this Saturday? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I saw it in the HLN, I think. Do we know what the turnout was? Did we hear it? Uh, That's right, it was the I think 45 or 50. That's good. Tree cutting. Tree cutting. They're still looking at some sites. Still looking, okay. Yeah, because but they've picked up a few more that they may. Where's that on the agenda? I don't see it. it it's, it's the open items. It's an open items, yeah. I just saw it in the. Yep, yep. Because we had, we had talked about it and I keep, I don't know, I keep bringing it up. Yep. It keeps getting moved forward, but then. It, there's no actual cutting <laughs> that, <laughs> there's, there's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I'm looking to see what's going to happen of it. There was something else that I was thinking of, and I can't remember what it was. So, luckily, we're meeting up. next week. Um, so now we're on items moved from consent. Don't have any other business. Past due bills from this week's folder. There were two bills in the folder. One was from Irving Pro, Irving Energy Systems, they called it, and the other one was uh, from Napa for bills that were 
not paid on time. Uh, on the Irving, we suffered a late payment penalty. And on the Napa, I'm not sure. I couldn't tell if there was a penalty on it. But the bill was stamped overdue, and we're sorry to have to remind you. Which department was in? I remember seeing, I remember seeing the uh, Irving number in those stuff. I think Irving's fire. Um, and Napa could be fire also. I don't know which one. I, I, that could be either. Um, I'm not going to answer now. I'll have to investigate rather than explain that. I mean, most likely it's just a timing of shuffle between mail from here to there to back to here. But I'll take a closer because look. Because I know on Irving, anyways, it's at least a one month pay period mm -hmm. for the bills. Irving, it was uh, eight dollars fifty-six cents late fee, March thirty-first. Another delivery of diesel on April twenty-third. Another late fee on April thirtieth of a dollar forty-two. Hmm. You look into that. I'll see what I can. Yeah. And then the other one was what? Napa. 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 I think that was a fire department too. Yeah. Go to the next page on it. Or is that it? This is the Napa bar, yeah. Valley Napa. Okay, but we'll, we'll look at them. I don't have an answer for either one, so I'll take a look. Uh, I don't think this is the one. Let's see what we'll do. No, there must be another one in there. Pretty sure that was Napa. Right there. Pass two. That's fine, fine. Doesn't look like there was any late fee on that, but yeah. Okay. I wonder if this is just. I'm gonna put them on the top. That's this fine. one could just be their net twenty five, and we pay on net. I think. Uh, yeah, there are times. I mean, times. The, the, there are times that we're within days just because of their cycle and our cycle. I I thought you were going to ask there. You know, you didn't ask about the obvious one in there. I thought which I was all set to answer. We cleaned up some issues. One of our vendors that we use for medical supplies had figured out that we had like an open bill from 2011, despite a number of transactions in 13 and 14. Um, and if you look, there was a stack there and if you, of invoices sent the chief back, like, are you really, do we really owe from 11? Well, and I thought you were going to discuss the reusable thermometers. No, <laughs> no, 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 th no, th this was, I think more, this was more medical, not Zoll. But we, so we cleaned up that mystery, um, which I have no idea. They just, but we'll look at the others. Okay. That anything else anybody else has before we move into non-public? I just have a question on the non-publics. And that question deals with, we're only going into one non-public session this evening? Um, I had the same purpose for all, for the, I, I had the same legal purpose of compensation for all of them. If the board would prefer to go in and out of three separate non-publics, we could do that too because there are three compensation-related topics. I'm okay either way. No, I'm yeah. asking because I just wanted to make Yeah, it was, it was the one topic that I put in. So, And I think the one topic covers all of them. would be if you go in under one non-public, all of them would get released at the same time, that's all. And if you wanted to separate them out. I don't think that would be an issue. Those. I'm not sure it's an issue, but I just wanted to. That won't be an issue, right, Jason? Um, I mean, you end up, you end up having then your longest duration one be is going to be the set the is standard. the governing one. Right. I mean, I mean, there's no secret here that I mean, and I, you know, we could certainly disclose, lest people think there's all sorts of things out there. I mean, the three topics that we intend to discuss are fire chief's contract, preparation, initial preparation for a union contract renewal, 
and the wage plan as approved at town meeting. Um, so you're, so you, the, to me, the longest one of those is going to be your union contract because you, you haven't even started that yet. So that will be the governing is time the frame. Is the contract though even a meeting? Is that declared a non-meeting under RSA 91A? Um, no, because you're all still talking about it. It's still a meeting because you all are having the conversation. And so as the Board of Selectmen, you're having that conversation. Whatever way you want to do, it's fine. What's the board's pleasure? Separate it out to three or just do the one? Just do the one. Just do the one? Yep. Do I have a motion? Or do you want me to read it? I make a motion that we move in the non-public session for RSA 91A colon 3, 2A compensation. Second. Roll call vote. Mr. Byron. Yes. Mr. Brunel? Yes. Mr. Perry? Yes. yes. And Mr. Bork? Yes. So with that said, we will be now moving into non-public session. We will only come out of non-public session to adjourn the meeting. So with that being said, I would like to say have a good night all and tune in next week for another fun-filled meeting of your Board of Selectmen. Have a good night.